Hello everyone, I'm Avi and welcome to Valve's review. Today we're gonna dive into the world of Valve datasheets and explore the essential details they contain. Whether you are a design engineer, plant operator, purchaser, or someone who has worked with Valve's, understanding what a Valve datasheet is and decoding the information it provides is, is very vital. This video might be a little bit long, but I think it contains handy points. Let's get started and polish our knowledge on this important industrial document. Here it is, a sample control valve datasheet, which closely follows the recommendations of the ISA S2 and standard. We'll take a walk, uh, we'll take a walk through to examine the details. It's worth noting that regardless of the valve or actuation types, we can often use a similar template for many of the valves we face. Whether it is a control glove valve, control ball valve, or even a shot of butterfly valve. Keep in mind that not all the sections may apply to a specific valve assembly, and you might also need to add some notes for clarification. However, the general structure will typically be similar to this. Okay, starting from the top section, we can see project specifications as well as the names for people who generated and reviewed this document. Then just below that, we have a few fields to describe the equipment identification number and location. KKS can convey a lot of information about the equipment. There is a simpler identification number, which is called tag number. Line service manufacturer and model are other important data in this section. Now we move on and take a close look at the operation condition, which is super important to specify any equipment. Although for control valve sizing, we might need operation data for all three points of maximum, normal, and minimum flow rates, we usually need only maximum values for a manual or on-off valve sizing. Other parameters, including inlet and outlet pressures, temperature, specific volume, viscosity, and vapor pressure associated with the three operation points should be indicated. Sometimes when process engineers are sizing the valves, they don't have all this data and need to consult with the manufacturer to be able to complete these parts. Cavitation factor here is only applicable to control valves and indicates the possibility of cavity in the valves. I will put a link for whoever wants to know more about cavitation. Then we get to the most important parameters in this section, which are CV and CVS. You might need to review the definition of CV for a better understanding, but generally CV is a valve capacity at any of the three operation points to handle the corresponding flow rate and will, and will be the main parameter in valve sizing. After calculating CV, we only need to go through the manufacturer's datasheet for the valve type we are looking for and make sure that the valve we select poses a bigger CV than the maximum calculated value. CVS then is the maximum CV of the selected valve when it is in full open position. There are some considerations in valve sizing process that I'm going to uh, discuss in another video. The remain parameters here are kind of self-explanatory. Noise level, which is calculated by, by the manufacturer or in some cases instructed by the line designer. And 85 decibel is kind of common approved value in the industry. Now let's jump in the parts that are more related to valve itself. At the right hand side, you can see all the data related to the valve parts, starting from body and then bonnet, ceiling, as well as internal um, internals called trim or wetted parts. 
Looking at the first section, valve type can vary from linear glove valve or diaphragm valves or rotary plug, ball, and butterfly valves. Then we have size and NC rating that are mentioned as NPS in inch and class according to ASMEB 16.34 in American context. And they are usually in DN millimeter and PN based on the European standard EN 1092-1, like for example, PN 10 or PN 25. Body material is the other important field that is selected by engineers to be compatible with the process, including pressure, temperature, and medium compatibility. The design data is the maximum situation the valve is rated to work, to work in and has been tested to. Connection can be specified as flange, butt belt, or socket belt. Threaded connection is also common for smaller valves up to two inch. From another fields here, I'm just gonna talk about flow direction and bonnet type. Flow direction might not seem very important, but in some applications with high dynamic pressure or water hammer possibility, choosing the right direction of the flow, being either flow to open or flow to close, can make a practical difference in actuator sizing or maybe functionality of the valve set. Bonnet common types are bolted, pressure seal extended, and simply bonnetless, like the small ball valve that one of them is showed here. Internal parts are the most important section, which need utmost expertise. Let's get to it. Talking about the trim depends on the valve type. If you are talking about a globe control valve, the plug type and cage should be specified based on the application of the valve. Not only can these two determine the control characteristics of the valve, but also are the main factors to handle cavitation and high pressure drop conditions. Multi-stage, multi-hole cage and labyrinth fit are a few methods to eliminate cavitation. There are some options with other valve types with similar concept yet totally different designs. Trim characteristics is a key field to specify as it relates directly to the purpose of the valve. This is simply a graph of valve CV or capacity factor over a stroke or valve opening. Using a linear or equal percentage has been more common, but there are some new designs that can modify the graph based on the special requirements. Another interesting concept here is balance trim. That is one or a few passages between the pressure side of the plug and the back seat cavity up there in the bonnet, here and here. This feature can balance the force upon the plug and reduce the required torque from the actuator, thus selecting a smaller one. The designers often use this design in large size linear control labs. I guess this was uh, enough for this sector as the other fields are pretty clear. As you can see, we have a few sections that stand out on this sheet. Uh, so we would be able to talk about actuator, positioner, limit switch, and other accessories in the next video. So thank you and please stay tuned for the next, next video to go through the actuation part and all common accessories for the automated valves.
I would also love to do research on any question you'd, you'd like to share in the comments.